Hello everyone. I welcome you all to this ECG lecture series. ECG is one of the very important diagnostic procedure which is required to diagnose the cardiac conditions. So, the knowledge on this particular ECG is very much required to diagnose the acute conditions and give appropriate therapy on time. So, let me just start this particular session with ECG basics. Now, what is that I will be discussing in the ECG basics? In the ECG basics, I will be discussing various waves of the ECG. I will be discussing about the ECG paper. I will be discussing about the ECG machine. And then I will be discussing what can be the errors in the machine and what can be the errors in the leads placement that give us a false diagnosis. And in this session, I will be also discussing about the leads of the ECG. Now, let us start with the session. So, this is the normal ECG, right? So, what does this normal ECG contain? The normal ECG, if you see the waves, right? If you see the waves, we have the P wave, then we have the QRS complex, then the T wave. And apart from that, in between the waves, we also have the segments. Now, at this point, you need to remember the two important aspects. One, you need to understand what you un mean by the word interval. And you need to understand what you mean by segment. So you take the interval, like for example, PR interval. PR interval is that which has the waves, right, which has the wave. And along with that, there will be presence of isoelectric baseline. That is what is your interval. And if you take segment, segment like for example, PR segment or you take ST segment, right? That contains only isoelectric baseline. Right? That contains only isoelectric baseline. So that is what is the difference between the interval and as well as the segment. Now, let me just give you what exactly is the etiologies of these particular waves. Why do you have P wave? Why do you have QRS complex? And why do you have T wave? And why do you have this particular segments? All this, let me just give you a picture. So, if you take this image, in this image, you can see the P wave. The P wave, it is due to atrial depolarization. Right, it is due to atrial depolarization. Whereas you take the QRS complex, the QRS complex, it is due to ventricular activation or ventricular depolarization. Right, ventricular activation or ventricular depolarization. And you take the T wave, the T wave is due to ventricular repolarization. Right, ventricular repolarization. Now, what is that you are missing? The one which is missing is the atrial repolarization. Remember, the voltage which is being produced due to atrial repolarization is very less. That is, less than 100 millivolts. And because the potential which is generated due to atrial repolarization is less than 100 millivolts, that particular potential is overlapped by the QRS complex. So you don't have a separate wave for atrial repolarization. So to summarize, P wave is due to atrial depolarization, QRS complex is due to ventricular depolarization and T wave is due to ventricular repolarization. Now after having discussed about this, now let me just show you a question here. Right, you see this question. The marked part of the ECG, that is X, right? So this is your X. The marked part of the ECG called as X points 
to which phase of the cardiac action potential so this is a multiple choice question which is integrating your ecg complex and as well as the cardiac action potential now in the cardiac action potential what are the phases you have you have phase 0 you have phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 and as well as phase 4 now what is the question asked what is this particular x points towards phase 0 phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 remember the point x right the point x on the ecg it corresponds to phase 2 right it corresponds to phase 2 what is this and let me tell you now you see the explanation you would have phase 0 phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 phase I, I will explain you everything now now you take phase 0 phase 0 this corresponds to ventricular depolarization right this corresponds to ventricular depolarization and remember this particular phase 0 is during which there will be entry of the sodium into the cells and because of the entry of the sodium into the cells there will be activation of the ventricle where there will be ventricular depolarization so your phase 0 this will correspond to your QRS complex right this will correspond to the QRS complex and you take phase 1 right you take phase 1 so remember this particular phase 1 that is the point when the repolarization begins okay so during phase 1 there will be start of the repolarization so that means what during phase 1 right during phase 1 there will be potassium efflux which will begin right it will begin and immediately what will happen in phase 2 in phase 2 during phase 2 there will be potassium exit and calcium entry into the cell that means what a positive ion is moving out and a positive ion is entering that will give rise to a phase called as the plateau phase so that will give rise to a phase called the plateau phase now this particular plateau phase that is phase 2 that will correspond to your isoelectric baseline that is x right that will correspond to your isoelectric baseline x which is nothing but st segment right which is nothing but st segment so x corresponds to st segment and you take the phase 3 during phase 3 there will be complete potassium efflux so this is your phase 3 is your active repolarization so your t wave right your t wave it corresponds to your phase 3 so now to summarize everything qrs complex is corresponding to your phase 0 of action potential next you take phase 2 phase 2 it corresponds to your st segment and phase 3 it corresponds to your t wave right phase 3 corresponds to your t wave now phase 1 it will be in between your phase 0 and as well as phase 2 that means like your qrs complex is corresponding to your phase 0 and st segment is corresponding to your phase 2 now this j point right this j point it corresponds to your phase 1 okay what is j point j point is this is your j point that is the end of s wave 
starting of your st segment this is what is your j point okay so that was the slide which was integrating your action cardiac action potential and as well as the ecg complex now apart from this pqrst complex you have an additional wave called as the u wave let me show you that so this is the u wave this u wave why is this due to always remember this particular u wave which occurs after your t wave okay this is your t wave after the t wave you will have u wave and this is due to delayed repolarization of papillary muscles of the heart right delayed repolarization of papillary muscles of the heart okay so this is what is your u wave okay and what will be the duration of the u wave the duration of the u wave it is less than 40 milliseconds and the amplitude of the u wave it is 0.5 mm right it is around 0.5 mm and u wave it can be physiological also right like in clinical scenarios like bradycardia sinus bradycardia you can have this u wave but what are the pathological conditions where you will have the u wave the pathological conditions where you will have u wave is in conditions like hypokalemia in hypokalemia you have the appearance of this particular u wave now after, so this is your normal PQRST complex. Now let me just give you little more details of the QRS complex. Right? Let me just give you a detail of the QRS complex. So if you take the QRS complex, I have dissected the QRS complex. Right? You have Q wave, R wave and then the S wave. So how is your QRS complex now? you have a negative complex the q wave is a negative complex now the question is why the q wave is the negative complex right the question is why the q wave is negative complex why r wave is a positive complex why s wave is the negative complex again let me explain you that in detail okay right if you see this slide over here you can make out okay you place the lead here right so which lead will be there at the apex your lead 2 right i'll explain you in detail about the leads but for now just remember you will have lead 2 at the apex of the heart that is the reason why and the wave of depolarization or your direction of depolarization or your axis of the heart is towards your lead 2 towards your lead 2 and that is the reason why lead 2 is called as the standard lead or lead to is considered as rhythm strip okay now our discussion here is why q wave will be the negative wave first of all you should understand that q wave is due to septal depolarization right it is due to septal depolarization now how will be the septum that gets depolarized septum will be depolarized from left to right right septum will be depolarized from left to right that means left to right lead at the apex and the wave of depolarization right and the wave of depolarization is moving away from the electrode so when the wave of depolarization is moving away from the electrode you will have a negative complex so in the ecg you have to remember one concept what is that for example you take this as the electrode and if the wave of depolarization is moving towards the electrode you will get a positive wave and if the wave of depolarization is moving away from the electrode you will have a negative wave right you will have the negative wave is that clear so the concept is same here also 
here the wave of depolarization is moving away from the electrode in the septum because septum is depolarizing from left to right and that is the reason why you have the q wave being a negative wave subsequently you see here the r wave how is your r wave r wave is a positive wave why i'll tell you r wave is due to ventricular wall depolarization right r wave it is due to ventricular wall depolarization so what you should remember is the ventricular wall depolarization the direction of your ventricular wall depolarization it is towards the electrode so when the ventricular wall depolarization axis or direction is towards the electrode you will have a positive wave then you take the s wave s wave is again negative wave negative wave means what the direction of depolarization should be away from the electrode so s wave right remember s wave that is due to depolarization of the base of the ventricle what is the base of the ventricle this is your base of the ventricle okay so when the depolarization of the base of the ventricle is occurring the wave of depolarization is moving away from the electrode or away from the lead that is the reason why your s wave is a negative wave that is the reason why s wave is a negative wave all right next and so i have discussed in detail why qrs is negative positive and negative then you take p wave p wave is what again it's a positive wave why because the same story again you see this is the electrode you place the electrode here and how is the wave of depolarization going the wave of depolarization of the atria is moving towards the electrode p wave is atrial depolarization and atrial depolarization is going in the direction towards the electrode so you will have a positive wave right you will have a positive wave and you take the t wave t wave is ventricular repolarization right t wave is ventricular repolarization now how will be the direction of ventricular repolarization remember the ventricular repolarization it occurs from epicardium to endocardium right it occurs from epicardium to the endocardium so when repolarization is occurring from epicardium to endocardium you see how is it this will be the direction of repolarization and this is your electrode right this is your electrode so repolarization is moving away from the electrode again you listen the concept if the wave of repolarization right if the wave of repolarization if it is towards the electrode you will get a negative wave right you will get a negative wave if the wave of repolarization is towards the electrode in case if the wave of repolarization is away from the electrode right in case if the wave of repolarization is away from the electrode then in such case you will have a positive wave same thing is happening here also here what is happening the wave of repolarization of your ventricle is moving away from the electrode so when the wave of repolarization is moving away from the electrode you will get a positive wave that is nothing but your t wave so that is the concept behind why you have a positive wave that is above the isoelectric baseline and why you have a negative wave that is below the isoelectric baseline right so this is the story of the pqrst complex if the origin of impulse is from the sa node right if the origin of the impulse is from the sa node now for suppose right for suppose if the origin of the impulse is not from the sa node right then in such case like for example if the origin of the impulse is like for example in the ventricle what will happen right let me show you that right so you take this ecg strip what is that abnormality you are able to make out you are able to make out 
that there is wide QRS complex. Right? I have shown you normal QRS complex. You see here. So, if you take the normal QRS complex, this is your normal QRS complex. Normal QRS complex, the duration is 70 to 100 milliseconds. Whereas, if you take the QRS complex here, it's a wide QRS complex. The duration is more than 100 milliseconds. So, what is this milliseconds and all? I will discuss in detail when I am discussing the ECG paper. Okay. Now, you will have this particular type of prolonged QRS complex in a clinical scenario of bundle branch blocks, right? You have right bundle branch and as well as left bundle branch in your conducting system of the heart, okay? You see this. This is your SA node and this is your AV node. And you have the bundle of his and then you have right bundle branch and as well as the left bundle branch. Now if there is block in any of these bundle branches, right if there is block in any of these bundle branches then in such case in bundle branch block you will have this wide QRS complex, right you will have this wide QRS complex, okay, right. Now after having discussed about the normal ECG complex. Now let me discuss in detail about the ECG paper. Okay. So this is what is the ECG paper, right? So you have some horizontal lines and you have vertical lines as well on the ECG paper. And in the ECG paper, you have certain large boxes. Right. And you have some small boxes. Right, you have some small boxes. Okay, now what is this? I'll tell you. You take x axis, this is your x axis. x axis on the ECG, right, x axis on the ECG, it represents the duration. Right, y axis on the ECG represents the voltage represents the voltage or we call it as amplitude right or we call it as amplitude okay now what is the duration of one small box what is the duration of one large box and at the same time how to calculate the voltage and or how to calculate that particular amplitude let me discuss that now now you take the duration of one small box right if you take the duration of one small box that is around 40 milliseconds right so consider this is a large box in this you have small boxes Right, so one small box, this is 40 milliseconds. Okay, in one large box, how many small boxes are there? Five small boxes are there. So you multiply this into five. So how much it becomes around? 200 milliseconds. So one large box is 200 milliseconds. Or if you take that in seconds, that will be 0.2 seconds, right? That will be 0.2 seconds. Or if you take 40 milliseconds into seconds, that is 0 0.04 seconds, right? 0 0.04 seconds. Is that clear? So that is about the duration of one small box and as well as one large box. And this is about the ECG basics on the ECG paper. Now. At the same time, you should also know the y-axis, <clears throat> right? At the same time, you should also know the y-axis. Remember, one large box is equal to 5 mm. That means what? One small box 
So one large box is equal to 5 mm. That means like in one large box, how many small boxes are there vertically? Five small boxes are there. So one small box in the ECG paper will be equal to 1 mm. Right, will be equal to that of 1 mm. And what is actually your y axis telling? y axis is telling you about the voltage. Now, one large box is equal to 0.5 millivolts. That means 5 mm. 5 mm is nothing but 0.5 millivolts. Whereas, if you take two large boxes, two large boxes will be equal to 1 millivolt that will be equal to 10 mm okay that will be equal to 10 mm okay so i'll repeat this again x axis is duration y axis is voltage x axis one small box 40 milliseconds one large box 200 milliseconds and y axis is the voltage one small box is 1 mm one large box is 5 mm and if you take the voltage one large box is equal to 0.5 millivolts and two large boxes will be equal to that of 1 millivolt. Okay, so this is about the ECG paper. And the other point is you need to understand or you need to know what is the speed of the ECG paper in the ECG machine, right? You see here. So if you see this question, the usual paper speed of ECG in the ECG machine. 25 millimeters per second, 50 millimeters per second, 75 millimeters per second, 100 millimeters per second. Remember, the usual paper speed in the ECG machine, it is 25 millimeters per second. Right, 25 millimeters per second. This is very, very important. And if a different speed is used, calculations will have to modify it appropriately. Right, calculations have to be modified appropriately. Now the question is, right now the question is, for suppose, what happens if the speed is increased? What happens if the speed is decreased? Right, let me tell you. For suppose, if the speed is increased, right, normal speed is how much? 25 millimeters per second, right? Now, through this ECG machine, if the paper is moving fastly out, right? If the paper is moving fastly out, then in such case, what will happen? You just imagine by yourself. When the paper is moving out fastly, the electrical activities picked up by the ECG paper will be reduced. Like for example, the concept is very simple, right? You are being chased by someone and the person whoever is chasing you is beating you okay for suppose you run out of him very fastly the number of hits what you get is less but when you go away from him very slowly the number of hits what you get by him will be more the same concept that is when the ecg paper is moving out very fastly from the ECG machine, the number of electrical activities what it will take up from the heart is less. So, the concept is that if the paper moves out speedly with, for example, at a speed of 50 millimeters per second, actually not what should be the normal speed, 25 millimeters per second. But if the paper moves out at a speed of 50 millimeters per second, in such case, remember the ECG appears that the individual has bradycardia. Right, the ECG appears that the individual has bradycardia, whereas if the speed is decreased. Right, whereas if the speed is decreased. If the speed is decreased, right, what did I tell you? When you are running away from the person whom they are chasing you, when you are moving away from him slowly, the number of hits what you get is more. The same thing is in your ECG paper also. When ECG paper is coming out of the ECG machine very slowly, 
the number of electrical activities what it will take will be more. So when the speed of the ECG paper is decreased in the ECG machine, it appears that the individual has tachycardia. Like for example, the speed is 12.5 millimeters per second. So how does it appear? It appears that the individual is having tachycardia. Right, it appears that the individual is having tachycardia. Right, let me show you the ECG also, okay. Right, you see this. Now, this is the ECG paper with a speed of 25 millimeters per second. That is a normal speed. Right, that is a normal speed. Okay. Now, the point is, when the ECG paper is going at a speed of 25 millimeters per second, the heart rate, it is around 150 per minute. How to calculate the heart rate? I will tell you. Right, subsequently, I will tell you how to calculate the heart rate. But trust me, in this ECG paper, when the speed is 25, it is 150 per minute. Now, the same patient, if the ECG machine is run at a speed of 50 millimeters per second, you see how much is the rate in this individual now? The rate is around 72 per minute in this patient. Same patient, but the speed in the speed of the paper coming out of the ECG machine has been increased. So it appears that the individual is having bradycardia. Okay. So before considering that there is some abnormality in the patient. First, you need to look at the ECG paper at what speed it is coming out. Always in one corner, the speed will be mentioned on your ECG paper. If it is 25 mm per second, then it is correct. If it is 50, that means the problem is in the ECG machine. Right? So, in the same way, like for example, we will take an ECG with a speed on the lesser side. Now, for suppose you take a ECG paper with a speed of 12.5 millimeters per second. When the speed of the paper is like 12.5 millimeters per second, it appears that the individual is having tachycardia. Right? You see in this patient, it is it is the ECG of some different patient. It is not the same EC, same patient what I have shown you the previously, right? So the heart rate in this ECG paper, it is around, around 150 per minute. Okay. So now the concept is that if the paper is moving fastly out of the ECG machine, it appears that there is bradycardia. If the paper is moving slowly out of the ECG machine, it appears that there is tachycardia, right? So that is what you need to know about the ECG speed, ECG paper speed. Next, the other important basics what you need to know is about the calibration of the ECG, right? Calibration of the ECG. What is the standard calibration? Standard calibration is one centimeter. So one centimeter is how much? That is 10 mm. Right, 1 centimeter is nothing but your 10 mm. So 10 mm is nothing but your 1 milli old. That is the standard calibration. You should not have under calibration. You see this is actually only 5 mm. 5 mm means 0.5 milli old. So this is your under calibration. And if you take this strip here, this is like almost 15 mm. So this is calibration is increased over calibrated. Right over calibrated. Okay. So that calibration can be set in the ECG machine itself. And the calibration what you have to set is 1 millivolt or 1 centimeter or 10 mm. That means it should occupy two large boxes. Now, these two things always you should see whenever you take the ECG in your hands. What is the speed? Is it 25 millimeters per second? Is it there or not? Number two, you have to look for the calibration. That should be one centimeter. If the calibration is wrong, then you can get abnormal ECG. If the speed is wrong, you can get the abnormal ECG. Now, let me tell you 
like if the, if it is under calibrated what will happen if it is over calibrated what will happen but before that let me show you that where do you have the representation of calibration in a normal ecg okay you see this is a normal ecg okay in this normal ecg right on the left hand side you will have the normal calibration right you have the normal calibration you see how much it is occupying you it is occupying two large boxes that means 10 mm right this is a properly calibrated ecg so now what is our question our question is that what happens right what happens if the calibration is increased what happens if the calibration is decreased let me show you both of it calibration increased like for example you have put a calibration of 15 mm 20 mm in such case you will have the ecg complexes with greater amplitude let me show you that ecg so you see this ecg you have the complexes very large complexes right so if you take the calibration here the calibration here is 2 millivolts that is 2 centimeters right 2 centimeters okay so this is the effect of over calibration so what is that you will have in over calibration in over calibration you will have the presence of high amplitude or you will have large complexes right you will have large complexes this is what is the effect of the over calibration all the complexes are large compared with an ecg recorded with the correct calibration that is what you will have in case of an over calibrated ecg and you see the right you see the other ecg right if you take the calibration here how much is the calibration it is just five small boxes that means it is 5 mm right that means it is 5 mm that means 0.5 millivolt right that means 0.5 millivolt so this is your under calibrated ecg so in case of under calibrated ecg what is the effect of under calibration the effect of under calibration is you will have low voltage complexes you will have small complexes you can see here the complexes all are very small right very small complexes okay so you will have small complexes compared to that of normally calibrated ecg normal calibration is 1 millivolt okay here it is only 0.5 millivolt so this is about the basics of the ecg paper <coughs> ecg paper speed and as well as what is the calibration now after having discussed about the ecg paper now let me discuss about the ecg leads right let me discuss about the ecg leads now if you take the ecg leads we have right we have a 12 lead ecg right we have the 12 lead ecg now what are these 12 leads we have three limb leads that is lead 1 lead 2 lead 3 these are limb leads then we have three augmented leads that is avr avl and avf these three are your augmented leads then we have six chest leads and what are your chest leads that includes v1 to v6 right i'll discuss them i'll discuss these leads in detail right i'll discuss about these leads in detail but remember the ecg what we do is a 12 lead ecg right three augmented leads three limb leads and six chest leads now what does this lead do lead is the one 
which will measure the potential difference between the two electrodes right you see this is an electrode placed on left arm and this is an electrode placed on the right arm now what does the lead do lead is the one which will measure the potential difference between the right arm and as well as the left arm that is what is the function of that particular lead by which it will calculate the electrical activity of the heart what actually is your ecg ecg is nothing but it is measuring the electrical activity of the heart right the heart is like contracting and relaxing the mechanical events of the heart are being converted into electrical energy and that electrical energy is picked up by the ecg that is what is being measured in the ecg and that is what is being done by your leads okay now let me discuss about this leads in detail so you take this question which leads are the bipolar leads limb leads augmented leads chest leads all the leads are bipolar leads remember that is your limb leads these are your bipolar leads augmented leads and chest leads these are unipolar leads so that is how the question can be asked now what do you understand by the word bipolar leads and what do you understand by the word unipolar leads let me explain you so first let me take up the limb leads okay so limb leads what did i tell you you have lead 1 lead 2 and then lead 3 let me show you that so you take the lead 1 lead 1 so limb leads are what they are your bipolar leads that means limb leads are those which will measure the potential difference across the two ends right you take lead 1 lead 1 is measuring the potential difference between right arm and as well as the left arm right it is measuring the potential difference between right arm and as well as the left arm that is lead 1 lead 2 it is measuring the potential difference between the right arm and as well as the left lower limb lead 3 it will measure the potential difference between the left arm and as well as the left lower limb that is what is your lead 3 so lead limb leads are bipolar leads lead 1 lead 2 lead 3 whereas you take avr avl avf right you take avr avl avf that is augmented leads augmented leads they are unipolar leads let me show you that the word itself tells you augmented leads that means they will just only augment right they will just only right they will just only augment that means they will enhance the potential across that particular lead you take avr avr is the one which will potentiate the which will increase the potential difference across the right arm you take avl avl is that which will augment the potential difference across the left arm you take avf avf is the one which will increase the potential difference across the left lower limb avf means foot so your augmented leads they are your unipolar leads right they are your unipolar leads and to tell you in detail about the limb leads what did i tell you limb leads are bipolar leads you take lead 1 lead 1 i said you it will measure the potential difference between the right arm and as well as the left arm so it is in this direction hmm that means left arm it will be positive and right arm will be negative and you take lead 2 lead 2 it will measure the potential difference between right arm and as well as the left arm Hmm? so that means in lead to positive electrode will be left lower limb and negative electrode will be right arm and you take lead 3 lead 3 it will measure the potential difference between the left arm and as well as the left lower limb 
right left arm and left lower limb that means left lower limb will be positive and left upper limb will be negative in case of lead 3 in case of lead okay so these are your bipolar leads now the next point is you need to know about the chest leads chest leads are also unipolar leads chest leads are also unipolar leads and at the same time we have totally six chest leads you should know how to place that particular chest leads where to place that particular chest leads that is very very important multiple choice question as well let me show you that right so this is how the chest leads are placed first of all you should understand so why are we using 12 leads for measuring the electrical activity of the heart why because the heart is a three dimensional structure right the heart is a three dimensional structure and heart being a three dimensional structure one electrode or one lead cannot measure the potential difference of the entire heart if at all if the potential difference or the electrical activity has to be picked up by the electrodes of the entire heart you require 12 electrodes or 12 leads to pick up the electrical activity of the entire heart and that is the reason why you require 12 leads right so to pick up the electrical activity of the entire heart anterior surface posterior surface inferior surface lateral surface right right ventricle you require 12 leads to pick up the electrical activity of this entire heart now you take the chest lead so how do we place the chest leads this is how we place the chest leads over the chest but you need to know in which intercostal spaces they are being placed let me show you the image right so you take v1 v1 it is placed in the fourth intercostal space to the right of the sternum v2 it is same placed in the fourth intercostal space but to the left of the sternum we don't place v3 immediately we initially place v4 where do we place v4 v4 it is placed in the fifth left intercostal space in the mid clavicular line right fifth left intercostal space in the mid clavicular line and in between v4 and v2 we place v3 then you take v5 v5 we place it in the same level of v4 that means in the same fifth left intercostal space but in the anterior axillary line but in the anterior axillary line and you take v6 v6 is placed in the same fifth left intercostal space but in the mid axillary line right in the mid axillary line okay so this is the placement of your v1 v2 v3 v4 v5 and as well as v6 and when do we place v7 v7 if it is on the if the leads are placed on the right side we will discuss that later but now let me show you the same thing over the surface of the heart now right so this is your surface of the heart you just imagine now v1 and v2 they are picking up the electrical activity of your right side of the heart so v1 and v2 they are called as right sided leads right they are called as right sided leads and v3 v4 v5 v6 v3 and v4 they are picking up the electrical activity from the septum these are called septal leads v4 and v v5 and v6 they are picking up the electrical activity from the lateral wall so v5 v6 they are called as lateral lead right they are called as lateral leads now what you should know is sir you have said 12 leads are there which particular lead is representing which surface of the heart right which particular lead is representing which surface of the heart let me just show you that now you see this septal view that means the leads which are picking up the electrical activity from the septum 
V3 and V4. The leads which are picking up the electrical activity from the anterior surface of the heart V1 to V4. Right? V1 to V4. What do you mean by the word V? Ventricle. You take later leads. Later leads are V5 and V6. And not only V5, V6, even your limb leads and even your augmented leads, they also pick up the electrical activity from the lateral surface of the heart. And what are those? Your lead 1 and as well as AVL. Right? Lead 1 and as well as AVL. They will pick up the electrical activity from the lateral wall of the heart. And you take the inferior leads. The leads which will pick up the electrical activity from the inferior wall of the heart is that is lead 2, lead 3 and AVF. Right? Lead 2, lead 3 and AVF. Okay? You see this. Okay? You see this is your inferior surface of the heart. Lead 2, lead 3 and as well as AVF. They pick up the electrical activity from the inferior surface of the heart. And you see, this is your lateral wall of the heart. And from the lateral wall of the heart, I said you, lead 1, AVL, V5, V6, they pick up the electrical activity from the lateral wall of the heart. Now, you take the posterior leads. Posterior leads are that, they include V7, V8, V9. Actually, we don't add any three more leads to V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. What we do, that V1, V2, V3, we will just replace. V1, V2, V3 is placed over the same thing in a way of, I'll just tell you, V1, V2, V3. They are replaced to a position of V4. V5, V6. Whereas your V4, V5, V6, they are replaced to, to the position of V7, V8, V9. The same thing, we will just replace them. Now, what is the use of keeping the leads posteriorly? V7, we keep in the posterior axillary line. V8, we keep it in the scapular lines v8 and v9 we keep them in the scapular lines what is the purpose of it the purpose of keeping the leads in v7 v8 v9 is to pick up the posterior wall mi right to pick up the posterior wall mi so this are the respective leads and as well as the respective surfaces from which they will pick up the electrical activity right so let me just show you an ECG corresponding to the leads and as well as their surfaces. That is, right. So you see this ECG, lead 1, AVL, V5, V6, they are your later leads. Lead 2, lead 3, AVF, they are your inferior leads. Then V1, V2, V3, V4, they are your anterior leads. And separately, V3, V4 are septal leads. V1 and V2, they are your right sided leads. Okay. So, this is about corresponding leads and their surface. That means what? For example, if the individual had inferior wall MI, then where will you have the changes? You will have the changes in lead 2, lead 3, and AVF. For example, if the individual had lateral wall MI, where will you have the changes in lead 1, AVL, V5 and V6? For example, if the individual had anterior wall MI, where will you have the changes? V1, V2, V3 and V4. So why we should know? This is because to make out where exactly is the pathology. Is it in the anterior wall? Is it in the lateral wall? Is it in the inferior wall? Right? So, after having discussed about the leads and their corresponding surfaces, now let me show you some ECGs with artifacts. Okay. Now you see this ECG. Right. In this ECG, you can make out that there are some 
abnormalities you see this this is an abnormality this is also an abnormal complex this is also an abnormal complex but in between you are having normal complexes in between you are having normal complexes now what is the diagnosis of this ecg this is the ecg due to poor electrode contact if the leads are not placed properly over the chest wall then you will get this bizarre pattern ecg right you will get this bizarre pattern ecg right so in this the problem is not within the patient the problem is in the leads what you have placed over the chest wall okay next now you see this is another ecg abnormality right what are you noticing you are noticing there are some thick lines in between right there are some thick lines in between what is this this is the effect of electrical interference i'll tell you what is that okay this is the effect of electrical interference now what is this electrical interference that is that is what you should understand is like for example you have placed the individual over the bed and you are taking the you have placed the ecg electrodes and ecg leads and you are taking the ecg but meanwhile right meanwhile adjacent to the patient right there is one pulse oximeter there is one defibrillator on other side and there are two three mobile phones on the adjacent to the bed or in the pocket of the patient in such case what your electrodes will do electrodes will pick up the electrical activity of this surrounding objects also right the electrodes will pick up the electrical activity of the surrounding objects also right so you have placed the patient you have placed the electrodes surrounding him you have placed many electrical appliances which will be generating the potential pulse oximeter is there right defibrillator is there two three mobile phones are there in such case when the electrodes are picking up the electrical activity of surrounding objects then you will get this particular thick lines hmm? then you will get this particular thick lines is that clear next now i'll just show you and this is again an artifact the problem there is no problem in the patient okay now you take one more ecg i mean there is no proper isoelectric baseline right so you are having complete zigzag right this is the ecg taken from a subject who is not relaxed right he is shaking right he is completely shaking right he is shivering when you are taking the ecg then in such case you will have the ecg with no proper baseline right with no proper baseline so this is again an artifact so this is what this is effect of shivering right the individual is not relaxed right i'll show you one more ecg similarly right you see here this is also the effect of shivering right the spikes are more exaggerated than when a patient is not relaxed when patient is just moving like that you will have the ecg what i have shown but when the patient is like shivering then you will have the ecg in this following manner the spikes are more exaggerated than when a patient is not relaxed okay so these are like artifacts the you don't have a problem in the patient's heart you need to try to correct all these before considering that there is some abnormality in the patient's heart speed should be 25 calibration should be 10 mm the individual should be completely relaxed leads should be properly placed right they should have good contact the individual should not shiver these are the things what you need to take into consideration before considering any abnormality within the patient so these are some of the points related to your ecg basics and in my subsequent sessions what is that i will be discussing right in my subsequent sessions i will be discussing all these right so how to calculate the rate 
right how to interpret the rhythm how to calculate the axis then abnormalities of the p wave abnormalities of the q wave r wave t wave u wave then what is osborn wave what is delta wave what is epsilon wave so these are all the things what i will be discussing in the subsequent sessions so this session was just only the basics ecg paper ecg machine what should be the normal leads how they should be placed so please follow my subsequent ecg sessions that is about the abnormalities thank you very much